now here i introduce my great golumulu friend uh, dr harmiz yalsita he is from philippines he was with us for one month and i was with him on three occasions in manila maybe four or five days every time and whenever we have talked about recent advances and how to go about and learning more and more he says why should i turn from prone to supine when i am doing so well i am so comfortable my patients are comfortable why should i go for this fashion so i asked him to present why he stuck to supine prone pcnl what new things or what good things he sees in prone pcnl so uh, i introduce harmi he is uh, trained in doing laparoscopic urological surgery he is also doing lap dolor nephrectomies and lap radical prostatectomies over 2000 pcnls in philippines he is king of pcnl in manila in philippines did the first pcnl in a pediatric patient he did the first supine pcnl in the philippines but still he loves prone pcnl over to harmi thank you very much for being with us please share your slides and tell us why you love only prone pcnl thank you very much sir uh, thank you harmi thank you dr chandra um my wait my desktop is not uh, can you see it it is on the board uh, still more than 300 and other platforms around 100 so more than 400 people are watching us can you see it sir can you see my slide no oh wait you have to share screen yes sir wait i did just share screen okay yeah oh, wait. there yes. can you see it sir yeah yeah okay so again uh, good day to you since uh, we have a different uh, time zones um i'm very thankful for the organizer dr chandra dr sk pal for giving me the opportunity to uh, present some of my experiences here in the philippines all right um by far i think i am the youngest here if not the green apple among the group of experts I'm very very humbled by the experience anyway i am tasked to give a lecture why i ch choose prone uh over supine okay but uh, i believe that before you can say or choose one you have to be doing both all right so let me give you a little uh, introduction of my supine pcnl experience yes uh, i think i believe i am the first one who did the supine pcnl in in my country i did a modified bart's free plank position and i did achieve my goal of a uh, being a uh, stone free in that patient okay and i was very thankful uh, to my professor then dr youtube i know you're very familiar with him all right and this was actually followed by uh, two more cases which uh, fortunately i was still also successful in those two in achieving stone free but they're just pelvic and partial staghorn stones okay due to a feeling of inadequacy that i I need the human touch to teach me. I went and seek some mentors very close to me in the Philippines, one in Vietnam, well no less than Dr. Dong. Okay? He helped me. I saw his technique using a free plank position and then I went to Malang, Indonesia. There I met my friend Dr. Paxi Satagara, okay, which he also do a modified Bart's free plank position. After learning their secrets, increasing my confidence Then I started doing supine PCNL more and more here in the country, okay, and then even in my center in National Kidney. So yes, I have seen the advantages of the supine PCNL. There's minimally movement in repositioning. The anesthesiologist is relaxed because they can always convert to general anesthesia from a spinal anesthesia. Okay, there is said to be fewer cardiac and respiratory changes, less pressure-related injuries, and less pleura. Of course, the less radiation in the hands, stone gravity can easily fall by uh, easily fall because of gravity, and I can do the procedure sitting down. 
Okay? And of course, the advantage of doing a combined RIRS. And these are the advantage I've seen and experienced when I'm doing spine PCNL. One, you have to make a longer nephrostomy track, especially if you're doing an anterior pole track approach. Okay? The instrument can be tight because of some limitations in the OR table and patient's hip. But again, this is relative. Depends on how you're going to position your patient. And this, for me, is a little bit hard. Doing an upper pole approach and getting the upper pole stone. Okay? Uh, I've seen it done, especially from Dr. Paxi, how he does a super pole, uh, superior pole approach. And it's doable, but again, it's not that easy. There's also the hypermobility of the kidney. One, you have to hold either the abdomen so that the kidney won't move, okay? Pelvocalyceal system may be collapsed, okay, due to the gravity. Uh, many cal calluses may, be, uh, may, not, may be missed, and the small fragments of stone that can be collected in those calluses may be missed, okay? Longer OR times, if especially dealing with staghorn calculus. Okay, and it was said to be higher, uh, to be associated with higher blood transfusion. And here's a paper by Dr. Yan Wang, Dr. Wang, okay, that's, that concluded that yes, both the prone and the supine are safe for PCNL. However, they noted that the operation time was longer in the supine group compared to the prone, and that those in the supine group frequently require second operation due to lower stone clearance rate. So what about prone? Look at this, a very wide surgical field for puncture, okay? Easily can approach the upper axis, okay? And there will be definitely a good distension of the collecting system, okay? Look at my case here, it's a full staggering calculus. I have a good nephroscopic manipulation and it made it possible for me to access all calluses and doing a one access, getting all the stones. And should the patient have another stone on the other side and the, time is per, uh, and, and the time will permit, you can even do a bilateral PCNL in one sitting. Okay? There's actually low risk for any lung, pleural, visceral organ, especially if you know what you're doing. And the question whether you can do a combined surgery, well, yes, um, as uh, presented by Dr. Hani and Dr. Pace, uh, the prone flex position. What are the disadvantages? Well, basically now I can say that disadvantages are basically a relative disadvantages because some can be addressed already. Them is the anesthetic concerns, morbid obese patients and even pediatrics and those even with skeletal deformities. And they say that the repositioning takes a longer time, you need more manpower, but once you have rotated and seen the team of Dr. Pal in, De in New Delhi, they do it only with three or four people, and it's very quick. It's, you, they just have to pull the patient and turn it around. So all this anesthetic fear can be resolved if you have a great anesthesia team. This is my friend, Dr. Castillo. And since the start, 2010, I never had a dislodged ET tube. I never had a problem in, any, in, in all of those cases, okay? So why I still do prone? Well, again, it's familiarity. I, I've been doing it for the last decade, okay? And this I learned from my friend and teacher, Dr. Pal, okay? And he has visited the country more than two times, three times, just to show us his, his skills and sharing his expertise. I have done from standard and I've done mini PCNL. I even do combination PCNLs. Okay, I have done single, dual, even multi-track, all right? And I have already gained confidence to do different kind of access from the anterior, uh, from the inferior, superior, even as high as between 10 and 11 ribs, decreasing the complication. To date, yes, admittedly, I have done quite a number of cases, not, but so far compared to the bosses here in this team, okay? But I have a wide range of, Patients already from ages seven, and the oldest, my oldest is 93 years old. Okay, this is from a friend. Okay, I have seen a I have done patients with kyphosis, 
and even physically challenged patients. All you have to do is adjust your table, mm -hmm. okay? Manage how they're not supposed to have any pressure injuries, okay? And you have to be in good uh, co communication with your anesthesia. Okay. I have even handled some malrotated kidneys and a lot of horseshoe kidneys. But yes, I do share some sleepless night events. And these are some of it and the list. The only thing I'm proud of compared with the international literature, uh, such as the crows, I think I'm still doing good. I'm uh, way below from the acceptable or not even acceptable, way below from their morbidity rates or percentage. One of these cases, I called my mentor, Dr. Pal, okay? Asked for help, what to do. You know, he's my go-to guy with every time I have a problem. And uh, he will help me manage it. And I won't forget how was that you have enough cases if nothing any complication. So I guess I have to accept that along the way I will have complications. But it's a good thing that I can manage it and I have friends to help me manage it. It is in these cases that we learn and apply it to our next patient. Here's another study done in October 2018, okay, saying that supine position is safe. However, up-to-date advantage over the prone position is far from proven. It is not superior to prone position in terms of other critical factors, such as stone-free, complication rates, and blood transfusion rates. So, why prone stay? Again, familiarity, okay? Nephrotic kidney. Full staghorn, I cleaned it up, but look at the to see this much dilatation in a supine position, unless you're going to do a rubber stopper to so that the, the fluid won't easily leave your amplex. But it's okay. Support team, I have it, I have it in my in my hospital, and despite the heterod of my patients. I have an acceptable morbidity percentage. So I'm happy with it. Especially my patients are still continuously being satisfied. So my conclusion is that it is not whether prone is better than supine, but it is whether which position you can do the job. Wait, oh, wait, wait. Patient safety and expectation should always be the end point in every case. Okay, and we have to be versatile. Learning how to do both positions increases the chances of that urologist to achieve his number one goal. Prone is my first love, but supine, I tell you, is very, very near second. Thank you for your attention.